Pop up, pop up, pop up, persuadable. What's going on, everybody? So we're going to do an analysis on the cowboy. Um, a lot of people are asking for when the character tier uplate, uh, update list is coming out. <laughs> and that's going to come out soon, actually. I wanted to wait for the cowboy. The cowboy is here. So we have some graphics being worked on. And uh, I do have a full hunter and character tier list that's coming out. Upgraded 2.0 and it will it has a lot of changes to it um so i hope you guys enjoy that until then i want to do a cowboy analysis now I, instead of just talking about the cowboy in front of a webcam i'm going to show you an actual match of me playing the cowboy um so really my commentary is not always going to match what you're seeing but this is a real match of me using cowboy it's not custom match it's not scripted with the hunter so you're going to see how i would normally play with it um, but a lot of people are asking me, you know, how good is the cowboy? Is he any good? Is he not good? So to kind of do a too lazy, didn't read answer, I think he's one of the worst characters in the game. <laughs> um, for a few reasons, we'll get into all of those. So let's first talk about what we traditionally would consider D-tier characters, right? D-tier characters are characters who have static debuffs. So this guy has a static debuff, right? We know that right now I'm decoding 10% slower. That means that it's going to take me six seconds, seven seconds longer, roughly, to decode this one machine. Now, I don't really like that, right? But I made a comment about, I think maybe two or three months ago, and I made the comment that if there were ever going to be a character I would explore with a static debuff, that means they have a debuff at all times, no matter what, right? Not like the mechanic or not like the, the coordinator, that 10% would be the highest number that I would consider maybe using, right? So... That's what you're going at. So I was like, all right, Cowboy's at 10%. Maybe, you know, that 10%, that extra six seconds isn't so bad. Well, the problem is, is that although it's not the worst sort of static debuff, his skill is, is god awful. And we're, we're going to talk about that too. Uh, we're going to get some wind in the background. I apologize for that. So his, his regular kiting ability, there's nothing too awesome about him other than his stuns last 20% longer, which is, you know, which is kind of cool. Uh, but he, he genuinely really is a useless character. And, and let's put this in the context, right? So when we compare a character, we have to take into consideration the hunter that he's going to be facing. So typically, as a general measure, I look, how does this individual perform against primarily the geisha and primarily against the joker? These things are very important um, simply because those are the two most used hunters in high tier, joker being a little bit better than geisha. So the problem is, is that his lasso skill, and you're going to see this later on in this match, his lasso skill is not that good. It doesn't have the same length as what the gamekeeper's uh, hook does, and it doesn't have the same auto calibration as what, and by calibration, I'm not talking about decoding, uh, it doesn't have that auto fixing that the gamekeeper's hook does. So for those who don't use gamekeeper really at all, um, gamekeeper's hook when you throw it, even if you miss the character by a little bit, it'll kind of have that sort of auto-aim feature where it'll still reconnect itself to the character. This is to add some balance to the game where you don't have to be 100% precise with it. But with the lasso, you don't really have that same feature. And if you do, it's, it's almost unnoticeable. The problem with the lasso is that you have to be so pinpoint accurate with it, okay? And you have to be within a reasonable distance that it's not always worth using. Furthermore, even if you use your lasso and you can somehow connect with the hunter who has somebody with balloons or has, a, has somebody on the chair, let's put this into context. If you're facing the Joker, for instance, right? You're facing the Joker. The Joker, once he puts somebody down on a rocket chair, he has his second skill unlocked. So to put that into context, if I'm the cowboy and I use my lasso and I now have you on my back, I'm pretty much useless anyways because he's going to use his rocket dash. So because the lasso has to be so specific, it has to be so precise that you can't just throw it like the gamekeeper's hook and then just start running. You actually have to position yourself to be close to the chair, relatively close, closer than what the gamekeeper's hook is. And you also have to be deadly accurate with that lasso, okay? Which means 
that you have to put yourself kind of in a dangerous spot, right? You can't just kind of chill by a pallet in every situation, use the lasso and run away. A lot of the times you really have to make sure you're close enough to the rocket chair and you're not in anything else's, uh, any other way of other obstacles, right? Or in the way of other obstacles. And that's a problem because essentially I can use my lasso, I get you on my back and now I just have a joker who's about to use his rocket dash and because of the positioning, I can't really put myself near other objects. So that's his biggest problem is that he's useless. He's like quite literally useless against the Joker. Uh, really useless against the Joker. Now, furthermore, the other problem is, is that when you do lasso somebody, you're able to climb windows, but to my knowledge, you are not allowed to climb pallets. So now you're at a disadvantage if you're running in an area where the pallets are down, they're like, they're like barriers for you. So the lasso, not only is it not accurate, not only does it not have the same length as the gamekeeper's uh, hook, and not only does it not have um, sort of unlimited use, right? With this, you can only use it so much before before it makes itself, or rather, obsolete, right? With all, with all the other sorts of skills where you use it, the lasso is not worth it. It's actually kind of bad, and you got to put yourself in harm's way. So now, not only do you have a 10% debuff to your to your decoding. But the question is, is that the skill that you have that is supposed to compensate for that 10% debuff is awful, right? Think of the forward. The forward's football is not awful. If you actually pick that up in a chest and you're a thief and you're facing against a joker, you would swap that out. But the football is actually really good for the forward. He's just not that good using because of his static debuff. The elbow pads. They're not really the greatest thing in the world, but you can at least use them. There's at least some functional use, and there are some good elbow pad users out there. So that's also not the worst thing in the world. The priestess, her portals, despite her not really being a good high rank character uh, because of her 15% debuff, her portals can help the team out immeasurably, especially in weak spots of the map. Right? Still not worth it based on the deco debuff because it's too situational. Right? So if you could theoretically take those from chess, you would want those. And right? So that's why they have a static debuff. The cowboy has a static debuff because he's supposed to have a skill that is good. It is the most useless skill. It's not good. It requires too much precision. It re it's not long enough. Um, I, I mean, there's times where I'm trying to use this against a geisha who has somebody with balloons. Because the geisha is so so skinny and tall, it's really hard to land them. I mean, you have to be like right there in front of her face. You, you have to be very close to her. And at that point, you just need to hope that she's not going to just go after you and kill you. So... He, he's kind of a harasser. There's certain circumstances where hunters, instead of picking somebody up, they'll go after you just like a forward, right? Because they're afraid of that harassment sort of thing. But at the end of the day, you have a static de a debuff and your skill is way too situational. It's very flimsy. It doesn't work all the time. Even if you can rescue the person. So even if everything I'm saying is absolutely nonsense, you rescue the person. Now you're either facing a geisha who's just going to come, like run right towards you or dash towards you, or you're going to have even better, a more superior character will be Smiley, Joker. And what he's going to do is he's just going to use his rocket dash that he is now unlocked because he put somebody under the rocket chair. So at that point, you're putting yourself at harm's way for really nothing. So a lot of people have been asking me, okay, so what do you think is the right setup for him? Well, if I were to use him, I'd actually put Tide Turner on him. I'd go west and south. I wouldn't go west and east because he's supposed to be technically a rescue character. So you need to build on the strengths of a character. So one of the mistakes that I see uh, cowboy users doing is they're going left to right. Well, when you go left to right, you're essentially telling the hunter not telling him, but you're essentially saying, I'm only going to rely on my lasso. You can't do that. What you need to do is you need to go left to right. I'm sorry, left to, left and south, uh, left left and down. Yes, left and south. Tide turner, because tide turner gives you the ability to either use your lasso or not to use your lasso. So if you go left to right on cowboy, it's the wrong build. It's not a good build. He's a rescue character. You got to play him as a rescue character, which means he has to be left and down. Because there's certain circumstances where I don't have to use my lasso, right? I have a nice, clear, easy way to, to kind of get to you in time. And at that point, we would want Tide Turner. And then what happens is, is if you use Tide Turner and your teammate goes down, then you can stay in the area and you can harass the hunter. So when he picks up the person who dies, you can now use your lasso to get him again. 
that's how you're supposed to use them. But if you don't have tide turner, you're not going to really be able to utilize that. Remember, you want to waste as much time on the hunter as you can. And so typically, cowboy would not replace coordinator. Cowboy, I guess, would supplement coordinator. You don't want to get rid of coordinator. So that means now that if the coordinator is injured or is now down or, or she uses her flare gun, you now have tide turner. You are a rescue character. Make this very clear. If you go left to right on the cowboy, it's the wrong build. Unfortunately, it's the wrong build. Left and down is the only way that you're supposed to play a rescue character. His entire build is based on rescuing characters. You need to use left and down. And that tide turner will give you a lot of ability. Um, by the way, this is a real match. This was absolutely hysterical, this match. This person really didn't want me to win. <laughs> but I'm going to show some more gameplay of, of what I'm talking about to really emphasize some of these points. Um, but like I said, left and down is the only persona build that should be used on Cowboy. He's a rescue character, and it will give you flexibility between just manually taking them off of the rocket chair and giving them Tide Turner. Let me make this clear. If you have Tide Turner and you use your lasso, Tide Turner is not activated. You have to manually take them off the rocket chair. We already did the testing on this. So that's what's good about Tide Turner, where um, if you have Tide Turner with the Cowboy, um, and the hunter really isn't near you, you can use your lasso and you're not activating your tide turner, which means you can go in for a rescue and not waste a tide turner on nothing. And that's actually a strength of his, right? You can't do that with coordinator. If you have, if you have tide turner and the hunter just leaves and allows you to rescue, you're wasting your tide turner now on an easy rescue. So the cowboy has that flexibility where if it's an easy rescue, he can use his lasso and not waste his tide turner. If the hunter is camping, then that's when he can go in and depending on what chair it is, he can either use his lasso, which tide turner is not activated, or he can go and run in and do your typical tide turner rescue. It's not going to be as good as coordinators because you don't have a flare, but if, if now you're, you're victim if you will or your teammate has 20 seconds to waste a hunter's time that's almost that's almost one fourth of a or actually more than that around one third relatively of another cypher machine and then if your teammate goes down you could be right there with your tide turner or whatever it's going to be deactivated at that point and you can use your lasso to harass and try to hope that you can get the teammate off of the balloons so now the hunter has to worry about you like you would have to worry about a forward and look at this i actually escaped and i'm able to get away that was awesome let me show you some more gameplay of me talking about these things uh, just so you guys understand the analysis that i'm saying about the cowboy and some of my thoughts all right, so right now this is going to be a custom match. I'm going to just show you some things, thanks to uh, Appio and uh, Cool and Bot. Well, Bot is actually just a random gardener, and thanks to the uh, Hunter. So I want to show you some things, right? So this is what Tide Turner. This is what Tide Turner. I'm going to show you some of the things I was talking about. So what we're going to do now, right here, we're going to rescue a male character. So that means that if he hits me. We both, I, uh, I get hit once and the thief just goes down, right? This is us testing to see if Tide Turner would work, right? So Tide Turner does not work with the lasso. It only works with the Tide Turner. Um, a manual rescue, which is kind of good because it allows you flexibility, right? If I can use my lasso and prevent um, using my Tide Turner, then I would do that. But you got to be careful too. If you use your lasso and watch this, see? So now we're going to lasso him now right after the tide turner just to see and see how that last effort works right so last uh so tide turner only works when you do that manual save the lasso doesn't work but you but you need to be careful with how you dictate how to use this right because if you use the lasso and then your teammate your male teammate gets hit again you get hit while carry him he's just gonna die faster he's just gonna get put on the rocket here now if it was a female character i'd be hit twice so i'd go down and the female character could keep running all right, so that's the difference between the male and female characters with the cowboy. All right. So if he's a saved character, like I said, uh, you have to go left to right. Now, for those who don't know what, what's going on right now is because I'm knocked down. If, if you pick up and drop me, pick up and drop me, pick up and drop me, then I will, I'll be dropped again. And so that's what you'll see. That's why he's dropping me. So it allows me to get back up. Some people didn't. That's, I guess that's the hidden Easter egg of this video. Some people didn't know you could do that as a hunter. Um... So we're going to do some healing right now, and then we're going to show you what exactly happens when I rescue a female character on the rocket chair, and then I'm injured or hit. It's an insta-death for me, and the 
female character will be able to continue earning. So although it's a little bit more complex than other characters because it really depends on you know the character of the person you're rescuing, uh, like I said, he's still somewhat of a useless character. I think he's actually one of the worst characters in the game because you have a static debuff and then you have a skill that, that's kind of horrible, especially high tiers. I mean, they usually know exactly when you're coming for the cheer, so you're stuck pretty much just being a tide turner sort of doctor without the skill. Um, so here we go. See how I get knocked down in one hit, and she gets to continue running. So you kind of sacrifice yourself for the female characters. How noble. <laughs> So we've talked about the persona build and we talked about how he should be left and down for his persona build. So the real question is where does after all of this discussion, we talked about his lasso, we talked about the effectiveness of it. The question is how good is he? Where does he belong? And the answer is probably at the bottom. Um, in fact, I would rather have an explorer than have him on my team any day, right? Because an explorer doesn't have a decode debuff and an explorer just has your normal, typical sort of... Um, uh, chitin ability, right? But the reason why the Explorer is better than him is because the Explorer doesn't have a decode debuff. Now, some people will say the Explorer's skill could be useless, and I agree. Most of the time, it is useless because you can't kite and you, you can't really save. You're a hiding character. That doesn't benefit your team really too much. A lot of high-tier hunters won't waste your time trying to find you. So with that being said, I'd still rather have an Explorer any day before the Cowboy because he has a static decode debuff which the explorer doesn't and he also um has a debuff to his uh his i just said that <laughs> he's got a debuff to his decode which isn't good and his skill is useless his skill really is useless i mean i guess i, I guess there's some circumstantial times that you can use it but i would actually say that this is probably more useless than the elbow pads or maybe i'm stretching it there a little bit um, but at least, at least the mercenary, when the mercenary is injured, the mercenary has that 30% perseverance on the rocket chair. So this guy really doesn't have much. His skill is useless against the geisha. It's more useless against the joker. So my overall analysis of this individual, this character, is that if he didn't have a static deco debuff, he'd probably, he'd probably be maybe, maybe maybe between C, uh, tier C and D maybe, but he's his static debuff in conjunction with his 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 skill that is really useless against uh, the, the most well-known uh, character that's played. He's just, it's, it's not really worth it. You put yourself in harm's way um, because you have that, re uh, that slight reduced movement when you have somebody on your back. Um, whereas the coordinator has way more versatility in terms of being able to save with her flare gun when she uses it when she's not um in fact the coordinator is probably the most important is the most important character that just makes or breaks the team um depending on when they go in for their rescue if i lose a match it's typically because i faced a really good coordinator that was able to rescue and outsmart me the cowboy there's no fear factor with him there's no fear factor at all um, so you got to be incredibly careful. Most of the time, if the cowboy goes in for the rescue, we're pretty much going to be able to at least hit you once before the rescue, and that's when you need to rely on your tide turner. And that means that your lasso is not really used. And if you use the lasso, the lasso is not that accurate. It's got to be completely pinpoint accurate, and the distance is not like the gamekeeper's hook. I do not recommend buying him unless you just want to have fun. Thanks, guys, for watching. We are going to have boot camp soon. Take care, guys.